Thank you for joining us on Daily News Podcast. It's time to explore the stories that are defining our times, from groundbreaking local events to pressing national issues. All the news you need, right here on Mangalore Today. In a bid to streamline the process of paying fines for traffic violations, Karnataka State Police has launched a new website. The website, which can be accessed at payfinechallen.com 7271, allows citizens outside of Bangalore City to check and pay their pending fines online. This initiative aims to reduce the inconvenience for individuals and decrease the footfall at police stations. However, concerns have been raised about the website's security, as it displays unmasked owner names and addresses for vehicles with pending fines. In response, the Traffic Additional Director General of Police has assured users that personal information will be hidden for the next 24 hours. Prior to this online platform, violators had to physically visit traffic stations to settle fines. Currently, over 3.25 lakh traffic violation cases are pending, with fines amounting to a staggering 1,700 crore. The police are exploring options to improve fine collection efficiency, including potential amendments to the Motor Vehicles Act to allow seizure and auctioning of vehicles involved in repeated violations. In a shocking incident, an astrologer named Ananta Naika has been arrested by Brahmavar police in Udupi on charges of sexually abusing a teenager. The 51-year-old astrologer, who claimed to be a Vastu expert and yoga pundit, had been operating from a room in a lodge near Brahmavar bus stand for the past 12 years. He allegedly sexually abused an 18-year-old boy who had consulted him along with his father for Vastu advice. The arrest was made following a complaint, and the accused has been remanded to 14 days of judicial custody after being produced before the court. In the latest updates for train services in the Palakkad division, here are the regulations in place. The Parasurum Express from Mangaluru Central to Nagarkoil Junction will be rescheduled to depart late by 1 hour 30 minutes on May 11th and 22nd. Additionally, the West Coast Superfast Express will originate its journey from Ulal Station instead of Mangaluru Central on May 10th and 21st. And the Kojikode Express will also originate from Ulal Station on the same days. Several other trains, including the Porbandar Kochavili Express and the Thiruvananthapuram Hazrat Nizamuddin Rajdani Express, will be regulated en route. Passengers are advised to check the revised schedules before planning their journeys. In a tragic accident near Sampe, a couple sustained severe injuries as their car veered off the road while traveling from Puttur to Madikeri. The vehicle crashed into a hotel wall, leaving the driver and his wife in critical condition. They were quickly taken to a hospital in Sulia for urgent medical attention. Our thoughts are with the couple for a speedy recovery. Stay tuned to Mangalore today for further updates on this developing story. In a tragic incident at BC Road, Bantwal, a scooterist lost his life after colliding with a tipper near the Netravathi Bridge. The victim, identified as Suba Bandari, a 68-year-old from Poyitajay, was in BC Road to attend a wedding when the accident occurred. Bantwal Traffic Police have initiated an investigation and registered a case in this regard. Our thoughts are with the family and friends of the deceased during this difficult time. In Mangalore, 101 individuals who participated in a protest at the toll gate near NITK in Saratkal have been summoned to appear before the court on May 4th. The protest was led by activists of the Toll Gate Action Committee in November 2022, resulting in over 250 arrests. Among those summoned are Congress leader Mithun Rai and Action Committee convener Munir Kadipala. The protesters face legal action under various sections. Following the filing of a charge sheet by Saratkal police in October 2023, the court has issued these summons, calling for accountability in this ongoing legal matter. Passenger ship service between Lakshadweep and Mangaluru has resumed as 160 passengers arrived at Old Mangaluru port in the high-speed MSV Parali vessel. The crew included a pilot, chief engineer, assistant engineer, and eight other personnel. Each passenger was charged 650. The service was reinstated after Congress activist Abubakar Ashraf, along with others, approached former MP Mohammed Hamdullah Saeed. The initiative was supported by Dakshina Kannada District in charge Minister Dinesh Gundu Rao. 
Passengers like Naseeb Khan traveled for medical treatment and applauded the reduced travel time. Mohammed Ashradi emphasized the convenience of direct travel instead of detours to reach Mangaluru. The return of this service is expected to boost tourism and enhance connectivity between the two regions. The Department of Horticulture in Mangaluru is all set to host a delightful mango and jackfruit mela at Kadri Park from May 9 to 13. This unique event aims to bridge the gap between farmers and consumers, offering them a direct platform for interaction. Farmers looking to showcase their fresh produce at the Mela are required to register by submitting an application before May 7. The deadline for applications is Tuesday at 3 p.m. For registration and further details, interested participants can reach out via email at ddhdk at yahoo.com or contact 0824-223628. Let's come together to celebrate the goodness of these tropical delights. Mongolor May 3rd. In a major development, the Supreme Court is set to consider granting interim bail to Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal to enable him to participate in the ongoing Lok Sabha elections. Mr. Kejriwal was taken into custody by the Enforcement Directorate on March 21st in connection with alleged irregularities in the now-defunct Delhi liquor policy. Senior advocate Abhishek Singhvi, representing Mr. Kejriwal, asserted that there is no substantial evidence against him and his arrest was unwarranted. The court expressed keen interest in examining the matter thoroughly, but acknowledged the importance of the ongoing elections. Further discussions on possible bail conditions are scheduled for the upcoming Tuesday, ensuring transparency and fair dialogue between the involved parties. This high-profile case continues to draw attention as it unfolds at the country's highest judicial level. In a shocking turn of events, a kidnapping case has been registered against former Karnataka minister H.D. Ravana involving his alleged abduction of a woman. The complaint was lodged by Raju H.D., a 20-year-old man who claimed that his mother, a former house help at Ravana's farmhouse, was taken away by an associate of the JDS MLA. This incident comes in the backdrop of the controversy surrounding sex tapes allegedly involving Ravana's son and Hassan MP Prajwal Ravana. The police have filed a case against Ravana and one Satish Babana under various sections of the Indian Penal Code. In a related development, Ravana and his son are also facing charges of sexual harassment based on another complaint. The case has taken a serious turn with Ravana seeking anticipatory bail. Stay tuned as we bring you more updates on this developing story. Madhya Pradesh CM Mohan Yadav criticized Rahul Gandhi for switching constituencies from Kerala to Uttar Pradesh, alleging fear of defeat. Yadav claimed Rahul moved from Wayanad to Raybareli after losing Amithi in 2019 to Smriti Irani. Yadav accused Congress of struggling to finalize candidates due to Modi's popularity in UP. He expressed confidence in BJP's success in the upcoming polls. The Raybareli seat, held by Sonia Gandhi, will now see Kishori Lal Sharma as the Congress candidate. Yadav highlighted BJP's achievements and slammed the Congress for hindering development. He stated that people will respond to the Congress negatively for underestimating PM Modi. In a recent update from the Reserve Bank of India, it has been revealed that 97.76% of the 2,000 banknotes have been returned. The total value of these banknotes has decreased from Marie's 3.56 lakh crore to 7,961 crore. Despite this, the RE's 2,000 notes are still considered legal tender. The facility for exchange of these notes is available at 19 Reserve Bank issue offices since May 19, 2023. Initially open until September 30, 2023, the deadline for deposit or exchange at bank branches was extended to October 7, 2023. Later, from October 9, 2023, RBI issue offices started accepting the ORS 2000 notes into individuals' bank individuals' bank accounts. Additionally, members of the public can send these notes through India Post to any RBI issue office for crediting to their bank accounts in India. Mangalore, 3rd of May 2024. In a significant political move, Rahul Gandhi, accompanied by his mother Sonia Gandhi, Sister Priyanka Gandhi Vadra and Congress President Malikarjun Karg filed his nomination papers for the Ray Bareli Lok Sabha seat in Uttar Pradesh. The Congress party also announced Kishori Lal Sharma as their candidate for the Amethi constituency. 
Ray Borelli has been a stronghold for the Congress, with a notable history, including Indira Gandhi's defeat in 1977 and the representation by Feroz Gandhi and Sonia Gandhi. Meanwhile, in Anamithi, Sharma faces a tough challenge from Union Minister Smriti Irani, who defeated Rahul Gandhi in the 2019 election. The Congress leaders have shown confidence in Sharma's grassroots connection, while Ms. Vadra praised his dedication to public service. The electoral battle in Amethi stands crucial as it has been a stronghold of the Gandhi family for years. Stay tuned for more updates on this high-profile election contest. Australia has reclaimed the number one spot in the ICC men's test team rankings, pushing India to second place. India dropped mainly due to their 2-1 series win in Australia in 2020-21, being dropped from the rankings. South Africa and England follow closely in third and fourth place, respectively. Afghanistan, Ireland, and Zimbabwe are not ranked yet as they have not played sufficient tests. On the other hand, despite losing the ICC Men's Cricket World Cup final to Australia, India remains at the top of the ODI and T20I rankings. In the ODI rankings, South Africa is closing the gap with Australia, while Sri Lanka is right behind England. In the T20I rankings, Australia has moved to the second spot, with South Africa closely behind. However, India remains the leader in T20Is. Outside the top 20, Spain, Isle of Man, and Switzerland have made significant gains in the rankings. Overall, 86 countries have played at least eight T20Is in the past three years to earn a ranking. Mangalore, May 3, 2024, Bharat Biotech, the maker of Covaxin, reassured the public about the vaccine's safety amidst concerns raised by AstraZeneca regarding rare side effects of its COVID vaccine. Bharat Biotech emphasized that Covaxin underwent efficacy trials in India with over 27,000 subjects and was closely monitored for safety during and after its licensure process. The Ministry of Health also evaluated Covaxin's safety record, confirming its excellent profile without any major incidents reported. The company highlighted its commitment to prioritizing patient safety, stating that the impact on safety could last a lifetime. In light of AstraZeneca's admission in court documents about potential adverse effects, the company expressed sympathy towards affected individuals and emphasized the importance of regulatory authorities' stringent standards for ensuring safe usage of all medicines. Covaxin and Covishield were the primary vaccines administered in India during the COVID pandemic. In a bid to promote original content and give smaller creators a level playing field, Instagram is set to introduce a new algorithm that will reduce the visibility of reposted content by aggregator accounts. With these changes, Instagram aims to ensure that all creators have an equal opportunity to reach new audiences and break through on the platform. The new algorithm will prioritize original content from creators with smaller followings, removing reposted content from recommendations. This move comes after concerns were raised about aggregator accounts overshadowing original creators. Instagram's head, Adam Masari, emphasized the importance of cracking down on aggregator content and ensuring proper credit is given to original creators. The algorithm update is expected to roll out in the coming months, ultimately enhancing the user experience by showcasing more original content and minimizing the presence of reposted material in feeds. In a scathing criticism, Nationalist Congress Party, Pawar faction, leader Sharad Pawar warned against the re-election of Narendra Modi, claiming it would lead to dictatorship. Speaking at a rally supporting Chikodi Congress candidate Priyanka Jarki Holi, Pawar accused the Modi-led BJP government of failing to meet public expectations and pushing the country towards authoritarianism. Pawar highlighted rising fuel prices and unemployment as key failures of the current government while applauding guarantee schemes implemented by, by Congress governments in Karnataka and Telangana. He emphasized the importance of the INDIA alliance coming to power, citing concerns over the targeting of opposition leaders and erosion of democratic values under the Modi regime. In a shocking development, JDS MP Prajwal Ravana is in the eye of a storm as a rape case has been filed against him in the sex tape scandal in Bengaluru. The Special Investigation Team of Karnataka Police has charged him under various sections including rape, criminal intimidation, and uploading of explicit content. 
This is the second case against the grandson of former Prime Minister H.D. Devigauda, as a previous case involved allegations of sexual harassment and stalking. Prajwal Ravana, who is seeking re-election, is currently facing a global lookout notice after reportedly fleeing to Germany. The incident has sparked a political tug of war between the BJP and Congress, as Congress leader Rahul Gandhi demanded an apology from PM Modi over the controversy. Stay tuned as the story develops. In Bellary, a tragic incident occurred at Kalyan Jewelers store, where three individuals were severely injured due to an air conditioner explosion. The blast, caused by a malfunction in one of the store's AC units, resulted in shattered windows and chaos. The injured were quickly rushed to the hospital in critical condition. Prompt response from fire tenders and police officials at the scene helped in managing the situation. Our thoughts and prayers are with the victims and their families during this difficult time. In a major update from Uttar Pradesh, the Congress party has finalized its candidates for the upcoming elections. Rahul Gandhi will be contesting from Ray Borelli, while Kishori Lal Sharma has been selected for the Amithi constituency. Both areas are considered Congress strongholds. Rahul Gandhi, who previously lost to Smriti Irani and Ethi, is set to face Dinesh Pratap Singh from the BJP in Ray Borelli. Congress workers are confident in Sharma's candidacy, citing his long-standing association with the Gandhi family. Today is the last day for nominations, and preparations are underway for Rahul Gandhi's roadshow in Ray Borelli. Stay tuned for more updates as the election season heats up in Uttar Pradesh. Thank you for joining us on today's journey through the news. For more in-depth stories and updates, don't forget to visit mangalortoday.com. And if you value staying informed, please subscribe to our channel for timely updates. Good night, and take care.